Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin was salatu was salamu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in amma ba'd. We are gathered here today to listen to the grand Ramadan talk organized by the Management Services Division in collaboration with Sultan Haji Ahmad Shah Mosque Center for Islamization and the Department of Quran and Sunnah Studies, Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman, Kuliah of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences. We are truly honored today to have with us our honorable guest and speaker from the Oxford Center of Islamic Studies, Datuk Dr. Afifi Alakiti. Ahlan wa sahlan, wa marhaban bikum maratan ukhra fil jami'ah al-Islamiyah al-Alamiyah Malaysia. Welcome to the Garden of Virtue and Knowledge. My name is Khairil Husseini bin Jamil, an assistant professor for the Department of Quran and Sunnah Studies, and I will be your moderator for today. Yang dihormati Datuk Dr. Afifi Al-Kiti, yang berbahagia Madam, Fawziah, Madam Fazidah Haji Bakhtiar, Executive Director of Management Services Division, our Director of Center for Islamization, Professor Dr. Akmal Khuzairi Abdurrahman, and my beloved head of the Department of Quran and Sunnah Studies, Assistant Professor Dr. Nashwan Abdul Khalid. Distinguished guests and viewers, sisters and brothers, ladies and gentlemen. To begin this event, I'm inviting all of you to join me for the recitation of dua. Let us raise our hands together. Allahumma inna nahmaduka wa nasta'inuka wa nasta'hdiq. ونعوذ برضا ونعوذ برضاك من سخطك وبمعافاتك من عقوبتك وبك منك لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك فلك الحمد حتى ترضى ولك الحمد إذا رضيت ولك الحمد بعد الرضا الله معلمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم تقبل صيامنا وقيامنا وجعلنا هداة مهتدين وجعلنا نورا وأنوارا يا أرحم الراحمين Almighty Allah, you are our sustainer, our creator You are our light and our fortress You are our wisdom and our strength We ask for your guiding hands to lead us to manage this event successfully and to benefit from it O beloved Allah Bless our honored speaker and guests and help us to benefit from this talk with wisdom so that we may increase our knowledge and strengthen our culture of excellence. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina azab al-nar wa sallallahu ala sayyidil mursaleen wa ala alihi wa ashabihi al-tahirin al-tayyibin wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Distinguished guests and viewers, ladies and gentlemen, I shall now invite Professor Dr. Akmal Khuzairi Abdurrahman, the Director of Center for Islamization, to deliver a welcoming remark. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you, dearest colleague, <coughs> Dr. Husaini, Dr. Dr. Afifi Alakiti, our esteemed uh, speaker for today, uh, who would grace this occasion of which we normally would have it once a month in Ramadan, a grand talk, which is uh, uh, co-organized by three different offices, uh, Center for Islamization and uh, uh, Management Services Division and also uh, Department of Quran and Sunnah, of which I've already told <clears throat> just now, uh, uh, Dr. Dota Fifi, that although that you can see that the audience is uh, still coming uh, to the hall, but that again, we already have around uh, 600 uh, with us uh, online through the platform of Zoom and also YouTube, alhamdulillah. And uh, we told uh, Dr. Dr. Fifi just now that it is uh, a university event, Dato, of which normally we would have uh, all of our staff together uh, to learn from uh, the esteemed scholar who would share with us his experience from a very unique perspective, inshallah, especially from you. Uh, and we know that you are very busy, but then again, very, very much. Uh, we appreciate you being with us here, alhamdulillah, 
And it's actually a blessing for us for the university to have with you and to really listen from you, inshallah, this afternoon. On that note, uh, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Professor Akmal. Distinguished guests and viewers, ladies and gentlemen, it is now the agenda that we all have been waiting for, the sharing of the words of wisdom by our honorable guest and speaker, Dr. Dr. Afifi Alakiti. But before that, let me just quickly read a brief biography of our Sheikh. Dr. Dr. Afifi Alakiti is the Kuwait Fellow in Islamic Studies at the Oxford Center for Islamic Studies and a lecturer in Islamic Studies at the Faculty of Theology, Oxford University's oldest faculty. He's the first ever Malaysian to be appointed to such a position in this famous university. His areas of expertise are Islamic theology, law, and science. Datu Afifi, who comes from Malaysia, was educated originally at the feet of the ulama of the Muslim world. And in 2010, he was made a member of the ulama council by the Sultan of Perak, His Royal, His Royal Highness, Sultan Nadrin Shah. In 2012, he became the Orang Kaya Kaya Imam Paduka Tuan as an Orang Besar Lapan of Perak and elected into the Privy Council of the State, the Dewan Negara, constitutionally as a life peer. Since 2010, Dr. Afifi has been listed in the, the, Muslim five, the Muslim 500, the world's 500 most influential Muslims. The title of our talk today is Embracing Ramadan and Work Productivity. It is, it is with a great honor that I call upon Honorable Datuk Dr. Afifi to deliver his talk, Faliya Tafadbal Mashkuran Majura. Thank you, <coughs> Master of Ceremonies. Thank you, Professor. Alhamdulillah, the head of department for this, and thank you, uh, Dr. Rashid, <coughs> originally from Perak now in, in UAE, Alhamdulillah. Hadirin wa hadirat, sekalian, rahimakumullah, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First of all, my profuse apologies. I know that on schedule we're supposed to meet half an hour before, but Alhamdulillah, we are now here. Um, as they say, Al Insan we Dabiru Allah Yukatiru uh man proposes, God disposes. So I I I I had uh, an early meeting that I was very late in coming to and I must apologize to all of you. And this is something which I will say to myself as a warning for productivity. As this is not because of Ramadan that I came late, but because for a good reason coming from you know, one is thunder to another is thunder. So I think, you know, those sort of things you really can't um, have control, direct control over things like that. Uh, but I thought it would be very good given that the um, topic of the talk uh, this afternoon, mashallah, in this wonderful month of Ramadan, um, the topic is embracing Ramadan and productivity. I think it's very appropriate. Uh, so I came on a... Um, a special mission here actually over Ramadan uh, um, where we have our Easter holiday break actually in the University of Oxford so Alhamdulillah so there's a brief period where I'll be in Malaysia for the first two weeks of Ramadan and I ask for all of your dua inshallah for me to go back to Oxford and to resume Ramadan of course over there with my family uh, but one of the things that people always think about Ramadan Unfortunately, you know, not in the UK, not in Oxford, not in London, generally not in the West, but particularly, I think, in Muslim countries, the Negara Negara Islam, <clears throat> particularly maybe in the Middle East, the Timur Tengah, is that unfortunately they associate Ramadan with low productivity. They associate Ramadan with kemalasan, if we say in Malay. They associate Ramadan with people waking up very late, especially if you live in the Middle East, in Saudi Arabia, in some of the countries, you know, where people basically wake up in the afternoon. I mean, la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi lalil azim. This is the month in which the Battle of Badr happened. This is the month in which Muslims changed the world. This is the month in which Muslims work hard to change the fate of 
the uh, civilizations of the world. This is the month in which Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it possible for Muslims through the mission of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought innumerous, innumerable, you know, changes to the world. Yet, somehow today, the, in the sorry state of this ummah, that the blessed month of Ramadan is associated with the idea of laziness, the idea that, you know, we, don't, we are not productive in this month. So I thought it was very provocative, uh, alhamdulillah, that the uh, organizers uh, put up a title, uh, Embracing Ramadan and Productivity. And I thought, wow, okay, what is the meaning of that? So literally, because I came from one place to another, you know, Hazal Manzil by Namanzil Atain. So this is just a um, apa, uh, in, in Malay, yeah. Manzil by Namanzil Atain, tempat berhenti. Tempat persinggahan. It's just only a stopping place. <laughs> I have to rush off from uh, Selangor to, uh, to Perak today, uh, to Bukit Pasar, and there's some further meetings. That this is a pit stop, right? That I have no, t I didn't have time. I'm afraid to prepare for <laughs> embracing Ramadan and productivity. Other than the fact that I wasn't productive when I came here, when I came even late to begin with, which is a bad, very bad reflection on on myself. Not because I had control over it. In that respect, according to the Sharia tradition, according to the Islamic sacred legal tradition, that I have the proper uzur and you know, the proper legal excuse for it in the eyes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. But nevertheless, why is it that we actually have that reputation? And particularly, why is it that we actually take for granted so much that in the month of Ramadan, as if this is the month in which we rest? That why is it in this month that non-Muslims see, you know, this is the month in which the shops are closed, this is the month in which the government buildings are closed, this is the month in which forget about doing any official business. And I think if the Prophet of Muhammad, the Prophet of Allah, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Lao, you know, you do your Arabic hypothetical if, not either, not in, Sharthiya, but Lao, uh, hypothetical, if the Prophet Sallallahu you know, is alive with us now and then seeing that this is the case, I think he will be in a, you know, meaning, you know, alive with us in this dunya now, right? I think he will be crying to see the fate of the Ummah. That the holy month of Ramadan has been associated as such like this. And maybe the problem had been that we have not prepared ourselves for this month. Is it? Or is it because we've lost our discipline as an Ummah to be able to kind of be confident, you know? And just as Friday prayers, Yomul Juma, which is in the tradition of other religions, you know, they call the, sa the day of, well, we don't use the term Sabbath. That is the term that is used in the Jewish tradition, Sabbath day, or in the Christian tradition, Sabbath. So the, 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 in the Jewish tradition, the Sabbath is on Saturday. And in the Christian tradition, the Sabbath is on Sunday. So the supposed Muslim Sabbath is on Friday. But look at this. Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this ummah. That on our Sabbath, unlike in the Jewish and the Christian case, Saturday or Sunday, depending on which religion you follow, they have their holidays. Holy day. Which is the day that they go to either their synagogue or they go to their church, which is why in the West, which is a Christian civilization, so they have a Sunday, which is a public holiday. And if you are in, in a sort of in the, in the old times, when the, you know, in the Jewish in the tradition, Saturday is a holiday for them. They don't go to work. But for us Muslims, the Quran itself says that actually after you have gone to your Salat al Jummah, that we go back to, to work. That even Friday is not a holiday, actually, in the sense that there is a chuti, you know, that there is a vacation, there is a, a break from work. Although, alhamdulillah, it's good that in Malaysia uh, and as well as many other Muslim countries, of course, you know, you, have, you basically have a non-working day on a Friday. But let us not forget that as Muslims, even on our so-called Sabbath day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually tells us that we can still go to work. This is unique compared to the other religions. When the two other religions, they have their chuti, they have their rest day. But for Muslims, we go back and open our shops. MashaAllah. 
So even if on our holy day, Juma, that we should not be malas, we should not be lazy, that we should be productive. Let alone, what do you think? The best month ever, which is the month of Ramadan. Subhanallah. Think about it. So it may be that we have not prepared ourselves well for this. Imam Sayyuti radiallahu anhu, one of the great Muslim scholars, great jurist in the Shafi'i tradition, he said in one of his writings, you know, in, in, in reflecting on, on some of this, he said that <clears throat> the month of, you know, Rajab leading up to the month of Ramadan and then Sha'ban and then coming into the month of Ramadan, the two months before the month of Ramadan, the ninth month in the Muslim calendar, Ramadan, the ninth month in the Muslim calendar is our target, is our objective, is our makasi. So therefore the month of Rajab and the month of Sha'ban in many ways are kind of months to prepare yourself for the month of Ramadan. And that if you pace yourself like athletes, if you pace yourself like Orang Sukan, athlete, I don't know, but, you know yeah, Ali Sukan, right? Thank you. Then you can be fit. That's the idea. Uh, and so that's why um, Imam Suyuti says that uh, Rajab, right, the month of Rajab is Shahrullah. That the month of Rajab, Imam Suyuti says, is the month that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, why? Because it is in the month of Rajab that our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mashallah, had that miraculous journey. That miraculous journey from, you know, took on the, the so-called the airplane vehicle called Burak from Mecca to Baitul Maqdis to Jerusalem in one night. MashaAllah. Right? And, and that was Isra. And then from that's the horizontal journey. And then when, you know, in, in, in today, this is no longer a miracle. In the days of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when people never traveled on Boeing 737 to travel from uh, Mecca to Jerusalem takes, you know, how many days? At least what, 40 days or something? More than a month. <laughs> so suddenly the, the, the Quraysh, the Jahili, Meccan, they heard that, oh, you know, asking Sayyidina Abu Bakr al Siddiq, at that time he was just Sayyidina Abu Bakr without the title al Siddiq. You heard what your crazy prophet said that he actually, he said last night he went to Baitul Maqdis, he went to Jerusalem, he from Mecca. I mean, the mustahil, yani. It's, you know, mustahil, not aklan, but mustahil orfan, hukum adat. Because they are not used to seeing we can fly from Mecca to Jerusalem in one night. MashaAllah. You know? And what did Sidna Abu Bakr you know, radiallahu anhu say? If he said that, meaning the Prophet, you know, if, if you hear he said that, then I'm the first to believe this true. <laughs> Which is why Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu then got the title, the Lakab as Siddiq. Inshallah, right? Even when scientifically in those days it's like impossible, they think, to travel, you know, on some airplane, <laughs> Burak, from Mecca to, to Jerusalem. And today we live in a time when, mashallah, you can travel from, you know, from Mecca, from Jeddah to Jerusalem in, in an hour, in two hours' time, you can land. So you know it is not impossible, mashallah. That was the miracle of that time, mashallah. This is why, you know, when our ulama teaches theology, right? You know, ilmu akidah, right? Theology. So they teach, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, what is it? Uh, ja'is, what is possible? Hukum ja'is, right? What is ja'is, you know? You know, yasihu, you know, fi aklina, you know, what is it? Adamuhu wa wujuduhu, you know, yasihu fi aklina. That means the existence or the non-existence of something is possible for our mind to conceive. But such as this, if you can conceive that you can travel from Mecca to Jerusalem in one night and your mind doesn't, doesn't stop you from accepting this, like for example, what is irrationally impossible, 
what is rationally uh, mustahil yani wujuduhu you know its existence is something that la yuqbal bil you know bil aqal something that our aqal will immediately reject such as what when you say 2 plus 2 is 5 if you say 2 plus 2 is 5 i think you will muntah in malay they say you will want to vomit the body the fitrah cannot accept it that's a different kind of impossibility that's the scientific or uh, you know it it's the rational or logical impossibility whereas what prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam experienced was not a rational impossibility it was not a logical impossibility to, to travel from mecca to jerusalem in one hour or in two hours in one night it was just they are not used to seeing it that's why this is khark al ada in arabic something that is extraordinary in english something that goes outside of what normally doesn't happen mashallah right yet this is why rajab according to imam suyuti is the month of, that belongs to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why because the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam got to meet came closest to anybody else angels included insan human beings to meeting allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the miraj this is the month that belongs to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of isra and miraj but imam suyuti reminds us leading up to ramadan the month of shaban is the month that belongs to wow he says prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam i mean i remember when reading this i thought <clears throat> hmm. i thought the month of the maulid is the month that belongs to the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam rabbil awwal you know so this is no it's the month of shaban right why because it is in the month of shaban that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to some ulama in the asbab nuzul in this is when the verse the famous verse inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna 'ala an-nabi ya ayyuhalladhina amanu sallu 'alayhi wa sallimu taslima allahumma salli 'ala sayyidina muhammad the famous verse announcing the salawat of the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam indeed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels right you know make salawat upon the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu, O you who believe, make salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So some of the ulama say that it is in that month, the month of Shaban, that that verse was revealed, which is why Imam Suyuti here says this month belongs to Shaban, Shahrul Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Is the month that belongs to the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But Ramadan, right? And this is this is why some ulama they say this is in the month of Rajab, you know, because of it being the month that belongs to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the month in which Isra and Miraj happens on the twenty seventh of Rajab. This is why some of, many of the ulama say that's why in the good the month of Rajab you do istighfar, you you perbanyakkan istighfar as the Malay say, you do lots of istighfar, istighfar of Rajab, something in Al Azhar they do, the Karawin they do, people in Malaysia do Alhamdulillah. and in the month of shaban because it's the month in which that verse was revealed according to some ulama that's why they make they start to make a lot of salawat right while from the month of rajab already people start to fast right people who are used to fast on mondays and thursdays have already started fasting people who are used to fast on the ayam bayat or lail bayat layal bayat you know the 13 14 15 on the month they already start fasting and in the month of shaban they continue to fast more regularly but especially in the, in the shafi school in our madhab in the shafi school here in malaysia because we have international students who come from you know africa who are probably malikis and 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 indians and pakistanis and turks here who are probably hanafis for example you know so they come from different madhab alhamdulillah ahlan wa sahlan to malaysia alhamdulillah uh, all the madhabs are open among the ahli sunnah wal jamaah and including non alisa jamaah this is an academic institution no problem but please do respect our alisa nama jamaah culture here right but in the shafi school after the 15th of shaban then it becomes karaha of you know 
detestable in English, or we say offensive too fast, unless if you have a good reason too fast. So that means you technically have 15 days, <laughs> which means in the month of Shaban, you not only you, you know, you, you know, when you're, you're building your, you're pacing yourself like an athlete, like Orang Sukan tadi, like the Ahli Sukan tadi, that if you fasted only three days in Rajab, then you try and fast more than three days in Shaban, right? Four or five. So up to 15 days, basically. You know, more fast so that you build yourself. So that the whole idea here is that why? If you look at the Amal of our ulama, and the model of our ulama is to build your pace, just like that athlete, that, like a runner, that you build your pace, that you do not become tired, so that that productivity increases. So that you do not suddenly are hit with Ramadan when you have not prepared yourself, when you have not made uh, the necessary you know, marhaban of Ramadan and by preparing yourself, that you reach Ramadan and then you punch it. Like me, I'm not fit. I'm unfit. So when I reach Ramadan, I become an, the most unfit person ever. Have your taraweeh, finish your taraweeh, and do your kimulan, and then you wake up in the morning at 11 or 12 o'clock. Allah, hawla, wala, whatever. You want to give the excuse to your workplace that you sorry you can't come at 9 in the morning because of Ramadan. Ooh. Do you think the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would be happy with your excuse? No. Certainly not. So the month of Sha'ban is the month in which you then do more salawats, if you like, according to Imam Suyuti, and you, you try and fast at least for Shafi'is, you know, around 15 days or less. So you start building that momentum. But Imam Suyuti says what? Wa Ramadan, Shaharul <laughs> Ramadan is the month that belongs to us. If Rajab belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of Isra'a Miraj, if Sha'ban belongs to Prophet Muhammad because of the ayat of Salawat, it's been revealed in that month. Then the month of Ramadan belongs to all of us. The Ummah of Prophet Muhammad because of why? Because of why? Because A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim Shahru Ramadan Aladhi Unzila Fihi Al Quran. Who done? You know? Linnas. Because this is the month in which the Quran has been revealed as a huda, as a guidance to mankind. And this is why, just like in Rajab, you started to doing your istighfar. This is why in Shaban, more salawat if you like there. This is the month of Ramadan. You know? You do your tadarus al-Quran. Can you imagine it? In one 24-hour cycle of Ramadan, where you actually have to not only do the obligatory minimum fast, the fasting, the puasa, right? The siyam, that you do your taraweeh at night, the extra prayers, that normally the rawatib is 10 rakats for all the, you know, all the salat, salat, you know? So if you count, eh, the, the, the people ask in the Shafi school, why is the taraweeh 20? Or oh, it's because it's double the raw tape. It's one answer. So 10 times 2, 20. Everything's double in Ramadan. Your pahala is double. Your uh, 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 thawab is, is double. But your atham, ithmun, sorry, is also double. Don't forget. Your dosu, dosu, and sins are also doubled. <laughs> but imagine in this month in which you actually double things. You know, you kind of, you know, everything is, you know, uh, Mu'adhaf, you know, everything is basically, you know, doubling, you know, basically. Mu'adhaf. Uh, Taraweeh. 20. You know, 10 more than the usual rawatib you do in a day. And after Isha, which is a lot already. And then you add to it Tadarus al-Quran. And you overload yourself with Kamulail at night. Now, if you're not fit, my brothers and sisters, hadirin wa hadirats kliyan rahimakumullah, if you're not fit like me, I'm physically not fit. If I'm asked to run or something, because, I don't know, the Malay say I'm kaki bangku. So itulah problem dengan orang nerd ni. So, baca buku banyak sangat kot. You know, you read too much, your book or something, you're not very good at sports, you know, whether it's my bola or whatever. So, you know, so I think, <coughs> so even in the, <coughs> Zahiri, alamu Zahir, physical world. If you are asked to exercise, 
I mean, not exercise, you, you, you know, you play maybe badminton or football or something. I think in my case, the first five, 10 minutes that I punch it. It's the same thing for your spirituality. It's the same for your alam ruhani. It's the same thing for your alam ibadat. If you do not practice, if you do not prepare, if you do not tell yourself in your mind that you need to be productive from Rajab already, then Shaban, building up that momentum, entering into Ramadan, whoo, then God forbid, we become one of those who, the non-Muslims talk about how the month of Ramadan is the lazy month for the Muslim. Nothing gets open, nothing gets done. Forget it. Let's wait until Raya. And then if you're in Malaysia, Raya, Raya is the whole month. Now that COVID is more or less over PKP, you know, it's like, wow, you know. I thought the Arab would say, Hadi Bida, Hadi Bida, the whole month. Some of them say, the whole month we have Raya, hey, Shawar. And the irony is, this is not Eidul Akbar. Eidul Akbar is what? Eidul Adha, Raya Haji. That's the bigger Raya in the Arab lands, you know, that's like the one that they have a longer holiday, like at least a week. Eidul Fitr is like, mm. so the Malays, you know, the Malaysians, they can say, oh, the Pantai Timur have been right all along. I mean, the East Coast, because the West Coast, we, we celebrate kind of Raya Eidul Fitr. Eidul Fitr is the bigger one, you know. Whereas Eidul Adha is like the bigger one for the, for the, for the East Coast, not like the West Coast. Oh, but see, the, that's why like they say the East Coast, like Kelantan, they say like Serambi Mecca. Oh, yeah, because they're, in this case, they're kind of closer to the, the way that the Arab practice. And that's true. If you travel today, huh, to the Emirati, to Saudi or any of the, 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 the Arab countries, it's Eidul Adha, which is actually celebrated as the bigger one, the Bayram Kabir, you know, in, in, in Turkish, they say that. So the fact remains. MashaAllah, SubhanAllah, Al-Azim. If you're not prepared for this, then when you enter the month of Ramadan not prepared, then you will definitely not be productive. Even when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have already told you, after Jum'ah prayer, our so-called day of Sabbath, unlike Jews and Christians, we go out and be productive. Imagine that. Let alone the month of Ramadan. So we must... Look at, into the mirror and look at yourself and ask yourself whether have I been this productive or not? And that is why, as Imam Suyuti says, because the month of Ramadan belongs to all of us. Because of why? This is the month in which the Quran was revealed. Because the Quran is revealed as a guidance, a hudan lin nas to mankind. That we have to go back to basics on this. That it is not too late. This is within already just the first week of Ramadan. It is not too late. So that we are able to correct this. And to correct this is not a very difficult thing. You know, the saying of one of the great early Salaf, one of the great early ulama, you know, Imam Abu Bakr al-Warraq. He, uh, uh, in fact, has the title Al-Hakim Al-Tirmidhi, but not the famous Imam Al-Hakim Tirmidhi, by the way. He's the cousin to Imam Tirmidhi, this Imam Abu Bakr al warraq Famous, famous uh, uh, early Muslim scholar. It's a pupu of Imam Tirmidhi from that area of Transoxasonia, Sasonia, you know, Mawara Akhura, you know, beyond Khorasan, Mawara Nahar. So, <clears throat> uh, he said famously, and then this is the sort of thing that you always say, you're Ustad Ustad in Malaysia, I'm sure in Ihya Ramadan programs to prepare for Ramadan and you will say something like what, what I forgot, you know, help me if I forget. Rajab is what? You know? Is the month in? Uh, is the month in which what? Anybody remember? Huh? So it's yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Is the Rajab is the month in, you know, Shahru li, li Zara. Right? The month of Rajab is the month in which you tanam. The month in which you plant your seeds, right? And Sha'ban is the month in which you, you know, Shahru is what? Tuski, you know, Sakiya. Sakiya in Arabic, which is what? Irrigate. Masa Melayu, I don't know. I mean, uh, sorry lah. Masa Melayu dah teman nak kakak berpuno. Maklum lah, maklum teman masih di perantauan. Siram, siram. Sakiya. So the month of Rajab is the month in which you plant your seeds, right? This is the sepupu of Imam Tirmidhi, Imam Abu Bakar al-Warraq, 
Al Hakim Al Tirmidhi, tetapi not the Hakim Tirmidhi, the famous one, who's the other, who who came later, who's the you know who wrote the things on 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 other things as well. But this is you know the one who is close in hadith and all that with the the support of Imam Tirmidhi. So the month of Shaban is the month in which you irrigate, but the month of Ramadan is the month in which you Isadul Zara, the month in which you tuai munai, you reap. What you saw. So if you don't prepare yourself, this is what happened. This is this is this is what you get, and this is why Imam Abu Bakar Al Wara Al Hakim Al Tirmidhi says that you have to prepare yourself because otherwise, the month in which you have to reap what you sow, you cannot reap anything because you tido, because you you tak fit macam main bola, because you have not paced yourself. I know it's too late to say this. <laughs> right in the middle of nasib baik, we have not reached the fifteenth day of Ramadan yet. Alhamdulillah. This is why hadirin hadirat sekalian rahimakumullah. The ulama say what? They say Rajab listighfari min azunub. Like the month of Rajab is the month in which, like I said tadi, Imam Suyuti says, you know, to say istighfar from our sins, to begin saying more and more of that. Wa shaban li islahi alqab min alayub. Oh, the ulama say this. So the month of Shaban is the month in which you start to correct, islah, taslih, reform, reformasi. Ah, ini bukan reformasi politik. Ia reformasi jan, apa, hati tu. Correct our bad manners and things like that. Right? Correct, you know, whatever it is, you know, that if you think your weakness is marah, itulah the month in which you know. Shaban tu, you correctkan you punya batin mana yang tak betul. You know. Whatever ke, ke, uh, ke, ke doaifan mana you, dia apa. Kekurangan, whatever kekurangan, whatever shortcomings you have, you know, so you start to try and rectify yourself out of it. But the ulama see, wa Ramadan, kalaulah in the month of Rajab you've already started to seek forgiveness from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, to ask forgiveness, making tawbah and all that, to prepare for Ramadan, alhamdulillah. And the month of Shaaban came where you, the month, you know, li li islah al qiyub. At least, like the cult, mean all you, you know, that we we correct our our nafs, correct our soul, correct our hati, correct our personality, correct our ego, correct ourselves from from our weaknesses, from our weaknesses, right? Then the month of Ramadan, or Ramadan lil, ever or Ramadan lil tanwiril kulu. Only if you prepare yourself that in the month of Ramadan is the month in which you could illuminate your hearts. That is the month in which your satellite dish, you know, masa itu bulan rejab, masa itu tengah pandang tak pandang, kononnya tak pandang, you know, the the Allah lah that we atau tak pandang the right source, you know, the pandang ke dunia je macam ni. Pandang. And then you naik your satellite dish so that Ramadan becomes the month in which jadi macam satellite dish nak astro to receive the signal from the satellite. Macam tu lah, litan wiril kulub. This is what the ulama say, and why? Because the final destination for all of us Muslims in this month of Ramadan, in, indeed in our life, is walaatul qadri, litakarubil, litakarub ilallah. So that if you have prepared yourself in the, you know, so that in the month of Ramadan, your satat dish is now showing the right direction. That you can litanwiril kulub, you can illuminate, boleh menerangkan hati-hati kita, tanwiril kulub, tak tahu sebenarnya, menyinari kan hati-hati kita, Alhamdulillah, menyinari, dari siapa lagi dari Allah SWT, you know, menyinari, hati kita terbuka, our hearts are open to Allah, then only when we are in that position that, come, Laylatul Qadar, insyaAllah, some of the ulama say after the 15th. Some of the ulama say the last ten nights of Ramadan. Some say the 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 odd nights, you know, twenty first, twenty third, twenty fifth, twenty. Some say twenty seventh, right? Whatever. Those nights, and this is why in our Mazhab, in the Mazhab of Shafi, after the fifteenth of Ramadan, you start doing the kunut in the winter, jahran, out loud. Right? Not that you know. I mean, and other Mazhabs also they have been doing kunut. Alhamdulillah. So kunut is not. Jangan jakun jakun buat kunut. Salat subuh. Shafi's are not the only one doing kunut, you know, for subuh. <laughs> Malikis also do kunut. If you never travel to Morocco, then travel there. At the Korowin. Even older, at the older university than Al-Azhar. So they do the kunut, those in the Mazhab Maliki, which is also Ahli Sunnah Wal Jamaah. If those of you are in the camp, you go, oh, tak boleh kunut, tak boleh kunut. Stop arguing. All this polemical stuff. 
or the ulama have settled this issue. Think strategically about the fate of the Muslims vis-a-vis -vis the other people, vis-a-vis -vis -vis our civilization in the world. Where do we stand? And when it comes to issue, issue for khilaf, agree to disagree. The Malikis also do kunud, but it's before ruku. We do kunud after ruku. But why you want to start arguing people? Please, uh, the Prophet never did this. Please, oh, la hawla wa la This is not the right sunnah. La hawla wa la Stop distracting yourself as an ummah. Go back to the ball. Don't become like <clears throat> the team. I don't normally watch football. Uh, since I live in Oxford, people think I follow the, what is it? Premier League, something like that. You know, they ask, you know, my younger, my, my brothers, and they're like, younger brother, I'm not sure, can ask Ayman or something. They, Manchester United, God, I think. And my other brother, Liverpool or Spurs, I, I, Mazhab, Mazhab Bola, I do not know. But one thing I do, what sometimes when I have time, I watch football every four years. Support one particular team yang perang idea macam Malaysia. England. Up to reach a point, oh, eh, kecundang. You know, memang, you support, support, memang geram, you know. But, you see, th these are things which ulama have disagreed on. We agree to disagree, alhamdulillah. So, please don't, don't worry about these things, you know. As long as there is khilaf, ada boleh ikhtilaf. We agree to disagree. This is why Muslims were great once upon a time. Alhamdulillah. Semangat sikit. And ra'i kan perbezaan. And the Malays have a nice saying. Dia ada dua. Lapang dada, tolak ansur. Tolak ansur dengan orang Syiah, Orang yang yang kita tak setuju dengan. Orang yang akidah yang kita tak bersalahuan. Ha, itu tolak ansur. Kenapa? Tolak ansur because you have to uh, grudging acceptance. Uh, Tasamuh. <laughs> Benda tu salah tapi kita kena tolak ansur because kita tak membunuh dia. Itu dia. Kita tak membergaduh. We don't want to fight. Yeah, like that. Tolak ansur. That's tolak ansur. The Malay say. But berlapang dada is kabul hakiki. Yang ni ta'ayush. You live together. Like that. You embrace the differences. Just like the Shafi'is and the, the Malikis who do the kunut in Subuh, but the Hanafis and the Hamlis don't do. It's okay. Please don't try and force us to, you know, do this in the name of Dalil, this or that. Because the Imams of the Mushayi have already settled these issues. Because this is, I mean, Adabil Ikhtilaf. Alhamdulillah. So that if we are not distracted by these things and the, 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 the dish is pointing the right direction, and we're ready for Lalatul Qadar to find Lalatul Qadar, you know, mashallah. And so that, that is why in the month of Ramadan, you know, in the, you know, in the, you know, after the 15th of Ramadan, you start doing the kunut. <laughs> it's a mark that you start to begin to look for Lalatul Qadar. In the last 10 nights of Ramadan, apa malam you kata malam tujuh liku? Is it? Yeah, tujuh liku, I, I never understood the meaning of that, to be honest with you. Does it mean malam tujuh liku, is it the first seven nights or something, or the last 20 nights? So somebody must teach me. <laughs> Which is good, you know, because you're finding the 27 or something like that, right? But that is the month in which when your heart is already ready, receptive, kabul, you know, they're ready for that, then if you're lucky enough, mashallah, then you want to try and follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, you try and, of course, we cannot reach the heights of the Prophet ﷺ at Mi'raj. Of course, the Prophet was the closest at Sidratul Muntaha. To reach the presence, Hadra Harabaniya, the divine presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the closest of all the makhluk. The closest. We cannot reach that, but the closest we can reach is this Lalatul Qadar, to have takarub in Allah. To have that takarub to God, the closest that we can reach. If we are lucky enough, if we are prepared enough. And one sign for us, for all of us, if we are lucky enough and if we are prepared enough, if we've done all the necessary preparation for Ramadan for the last two months, and indeed, now that I've said this today, today, a few days before the 15th of Ramadan, you still have the chance, right? Before the Lail to Qadar, to kind of, still not too late. Then, if you're lucky enough, that is the month in which you can connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, takarub with Allah, with your heart. That is really when, mashallah, you never know, all of your problems disappear. The dua that you ask come true. Whatever that you talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for in your own intimate moments, mashallah. This is what we must, all Muslims, this is the makasid. The, 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 the makasid utama. The primary makasid of Ramadan at the end of the day. The prime, you know, in the way that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had his, we chief, the taqarub of Allah in the night of Mi'raj, for the 27th of Rajab. 
And it's interesting, Imam Suyuti started out this nasiha with Rajab, then Sha'ban, and then Ramadan. There's a connection between Rajab and Ramadan. In fact, there's a connection between Rajab and Ramadan because the connection is that Rajab with Isra, Lailatul Isra wal Mi'raj. Right? That Mi'raj itself, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Prophet Muhammad SAW is closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the Siratul Muntaha, for us in Ramadan, this month that belongs to us, according to Imam Suyuti, right, is for us to capitalize on, to maximize on. Because this is the month of the Quran for us. That was revealed as a guidance to us. And that last 10 nights of Ramadan, or 50, depending on the riwayat and kaul in this case. Seek for that, Laylatul Qadr. But you cannot, and I tell you this, brothers and sisters, Hadirin wa Hadirat Sekalian, Rahimakumullah, Professor. You cannot achieve that takarub in Allah. You cannot achieve that Laylatul Qadr if you are not productive. That's the relationship. If you want to be able to achieve it, you have to be productive. That means you have to be fit for this month. Although this month belongs to you, to all of us, to this ummah, mashallah. But if you are a real mustahik, if you are not deserving of it, do you think you can achieve it? No. So you must tell yourself, tell your children, tell your wife, tell your husband, those who are close to you, that have we actually been among minal mustahikin in hadha maqam? to reach that station. And it's not too late for us to, if your satellite dish is still, dia punya kiblat di masih dunia, it's not too late. You can naik kan. Because, hadirin wa hadirat sekalian, rahimahkumullah, only those people who are not prepared for Ramadan are the ones when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in the hadith of Abu Hurairah, narrated by Imam Ibn Majah, Rubba sa'imin laysa lahu min suyamihi illal Sure, the famous idea that there are there are sometimes people who fast, but that person who fast gets nothing other than hunger. Ini maksudnya that you know you go through the fast, the mechanics of it, the imsa of it, the tahan, you know, not to do anything that we're not supposed to do for our botany and our you know other other organ, you know, during the month of Ramadan, we cannot do anything there. You tahan perut. This is it. You only get kelaparan because you don't really get the real benefit of Ramadan. That's why Imam Ghazali in his famous wasiyat in his uh, teaching to all of us tawsiyah in his Ihya'ul Mudin, the Asrar of Siyam, the secrets of the fast. And please read that book. It's a wonderful book. He says there are three maqam for the fast. The, the fast of the awam, which is the Fardu Ain fast. You know, the minimum obligatory that people need to cover the fast according to Fiqh Islam kita. That we don't break the fast by eating, by Sleeping and meaning sleeping with, you know, what I mean, you know. <coughs> so, bukan sleepy, boleh, makro. But <coughs> sleep with your wife, you know, sleep with your husband, sort of thing. Now, it's Bilahim Zali, right? So, those are the things you need to take care But this is the fast of the awam. But whereas Imam Al Ghazali says the fast of the khas is the one that have covered already the Sha'ban bit, if you now understand. For example, things which you shouldn't say bad things. In this month, you shouldn't mencharut, you know. You shouldn't, and, and for example, you know, of course, you know, there are, you know, th 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 those who basically cannot take care of their hearts. They, you know, they control it already. So, but the highest form according to Imam Ghazali is the fast of the khasu khas. The, I don't know, the special, special. <laughs> In your fast, where, wow, whatever you do, dah memang sehaluan dengan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In your makasid, in your intention already. So you see the level of Imam Ghazali, amal, action, and then, Psychological, you know, uh, you know, but the highest form is when the level of intention is already muwafiq oh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, this is why uh, the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in that other famous hadith, narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, of course, you know, the famous hadith which is, you know, in Sahih, in Bukhari and the rest, etc. Man sama rabadana. Iman and wahtisaba and khufir Allahu ma taqatama in tambe. Famous hadith, right? Everybody reads that. Man sama Ramadana, those who fast the month of Ramadan. No, imanan, meaning having that conviction. Pichaya, you know, I mean, not only just having iman, ashadu Allah, ilaha ilaha, ashadu Allah, Muhammad Rasul, knowing your stuff already. Ihtisaban, at the same time, 
you know, this is where you don't only do the fast with the true intention. This is the true fast. Bukan saja fast yang tadi orang yang fast yang lapar. Yeah? They fast. They miss the niat, but it's not the real, in this case, you know, not real fast. Wah, tisaban. And counting, meaning, yelah, they check. They tak langgar anything. In this case, tak langgar the things yang Imam Khazali kata tadi, contohnya. Bukan saja yang... Apa yang apa? Uh, not just the drink, not just the zahir saja, tapi benda-benda dalam hati kita. If we have the problem this Ramadan, before this Ramadan, let's say, if we have a problem with angry, ghadab. Okay, we make this Ramadan our resolution, Ramadan solution, I'm going to throw away angry from me. So, the month of Ramadan, I fast not only my not drinking and not having jima, right? But I also fast from ghadab, from angry. Imagine that, and that's ihtisaban. Barulah, if you're able to reach that maqam, right? Ghufirolahu ma taqatama min dhambi. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, will forgive all of the sins that have come before. Do you think it is easy? Well, it's rahmat of Allah. Up to Allah. But we need to do the work. Therefore, this is what it means to be productive in Ramadan. If you embrace Ramadan by embracing the nasihat of Imam Suyuti, embracing Ramadan, and... I forgot the title. Productivity, right? That's the that's the kayu pengukur. That is the man in the mirror. Bak kata Michael Jackson. You look yourself in the mirror and see yourself in the mirror. Am I productive or not? So it requires these two things. So thank you, organizers, for giving me such a difficult and provocative title, Embracing Ramadan and Productivity. Because, you know, I didn't have time to prepare for this. I just came up from you know, one is standing on the way to another. I have to come to go out to Perak. I just have this. I have to rush in time for the meeting. So coming into the car and then we start rush. It was so worried. I come late already. I said, I asked, what's the title? You know, it's like I haven't had time to prepare for this. But I hope that you understand that in the end, I can only rely on people like Imam Suyuti here to help us out <laughs> to embrace Ramadan. How do we embrace Ramadan? By preparing ourselves to make sure that we become productive in this month of Ramadan. And how do we know that we're productive? If not, listen to the nasihat of Michael Jackson. Look at the mirror. You're the man or the woman in the mirror. And then you can see. Am I productive or not? So let us all be the true ambassadors of Islam. To those who are not Muslims out there. So that we do not jangan bagi hashmah malu. Malu aja. Ah, ini tak boleh nak jangan main-main. Ah, ini bukan tak boleh nak cakap malu apa. Ah, no, 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 no. Yang ini memang tak boleh. Memang kita patut malu. Kalau kita memang malas di dalam bulan Ramadan. We must have our decency and our maruah. And our masyarakat muruah. Maruah is the Malay word from muruah. You really have to feel malu. If you hear non-Muslims melekeh kita, what is the English word for Malaysia? Snipe at us and say, what? I see that Muslim, those Muslims, they sleep in the month of Ramadan. See those Muslims, they don't do business in the month of Ramadan. See those Muslims, they cannot do any government work in the month of Ramadan. Look, unfortunately, I stop from Ramadan. La hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al This is what has happened now. But we must reverse that again. No problem. Because we have every Ramadan to improve ourselves. To turn back, munkalib. Ya munkalib ul Right? We turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who can change people's hearts, to change our fates, to change our perjalanan hidup kita. If we see that perjalanan hidup kita sebelum Ramadan ini, it's bad that we, this Ramadan, I'm not going to sleep that way. And we become productive as a result. And I hope, hadhi kifayah insha'Allah li ahli al-ilm that this is sufficient as a tazkirah, apa, Cakap grand, tak cakap, wuih, teman bukan grand. Sahir, nah. Tak adalah grand ni pun. So, tapi just as a reminder to myself, how I would want to embrace Ramadan and productivity. So, let us begin in this month, so that inshallah, from this Ramadan onwards, and continuing to every other Ramadan, inshallah, that we become those who are productive for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and for our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and for our ummah, mashallah. Those beautiful months of Rajab, you know, the seventh month of Islam, Sha'ban, the eighth month of, of Hijrah, and the ninth month of Hijrah, which is Ramadan. So that 
after Ramadan then you have that victory of Idul Fitri nak raya Eid sebulan sebulan lah I no comment on that but you know I hope that this has been sufficient and I think it's more than enough time aku luka uli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa lil muslimin min kulli dhamb wa astaghfirullah bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin barik lahum lana fi shahri ramadan wa'adahu allahum alayna sinin dan ba'da sinin wa awaman ba'da awam ala ma tuhibbu wa tartahu bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin allahumma inna nas'aluka ridaka wal jannah wa na'udhu bika min sakhatika wan nar allahumma innaka 'afuwun karim tuhibbul 'afwa fa'fu anna an walidina wa an jamil muslimina wa muslimat bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin wa salli lahumma bi jamalika ala rasulika sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa ala ra'si nabi bakar wa umar wa uthman wa ali radiyallahu anhum wa ajma'in wa ala al-arba'ati la'imah al-mushtahidin la siyama imamina al-shafi'i wa abiy hanifah wa malik wa ahma'i bin hanbal wa mukalidihim fi al-din wa al-ulama'i al-amilin wa al-fuqahai wa muhadithin wa al-qura'i wa al-mufassirin wa sadati sufiyyati al-muhaqiqin wa tabi'in lahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-din وارزقنا كمال المتابعة له ظاهرا وباطنا في السلام وعافية والحمد لله رب العالمين شهد لله لم الفاتحة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين هدينا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين رب في لنا ولوالدينا آمين تقبل الله ومنكم So forgive me for any mistakes. Wallahu ta'ala alam bi sawab. I know I'm supposed to leave at 3 o'clock actually. I know this is well beyond the time but because I myself am late, I will answer myself when I reach uh, the next generation why I'm, I'm late. But uh, please forgive me for any mistakes. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ahsanallahu ilaykum wa rafa'a min darajatikum wa saddada khutakum wa jazakumullahu khairan kathira. Thank you for the insightful talk. Distinguished guests and viewers, uh, we apologize that we wouldn't be able to have a Q&A session due to the time constraint and uh, like uh, what our speaker said, uh, being manzila bainal manzila tain. <laughs> Let me just share with you a contemplation on this talk. It is interesting to see how Ramadan is related to mustahil urfan. <laughs> um, you may be deceived by the mustahil urfan if you have not enlightened yourself with the right ma'rifah. If Ramadan is the Shahr al-Ibadah, then Ramadan is the Shahr al-Ma'rifah. When you know, you'll, you will love. When you love, you will move. When you, when you move, you will produce. Thank you again. And we pray that uh, you will continue to enlighten the Ummah, particularly at the Oxford Center of Islamic Studies. We are proud to share that we have one of our students being accepted at the Oxford Center of Islamic Studies. And uh, distinguished guests and viewers, Uh, we will uh, we hope we thank you for your uh, participation and being with us we hope to see you again in our future session and sallallahu alaihi wasallam